My name is Clara Duperron. And what else? You could spell it. C L A R A D S and Dice U P as and Peter E R R O N. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning. Do you go by any other name other than Clara Dupron? Yes, my nickname is Petu, P-E-T-U. Mr. Brown, can you tell the jury where you live? I live in Canton, Connecticut. How long have you lived there? Uh, since 2012. Before you lived in, two, in 2012, when you lived in Canton, where did you live? I, le I lived for two years in Sinsbury, Connecticut. But before, I'm originally from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. Did you grow up in Argentina? Yes. Do you know Michelle Traconis? Yes. Hello. Can you tell the jury how you know Michelle Traconis? Uh, I met Michelle through a mutual friend that we had. Um, that Because I'm from Latin America and I have kids the same age as uh, uh, Michelle's daughter. So she thought that it would be a good fit for us to get together. And yes, same, we grew up with the same culture. So it, that is a very typical behavior when someone from other, from Latin America come, it's very common that you introduce to them because you share a lot of things with them. You met her in 2017? Yes. All right, and um, did you become friends with Michelle in 2017? Yes. Are you still friends with Michelle Trujonis? Yes. Uh, and obviously you don't want anything bad to happen. You're concerned of about course. her, right? Yes, of course. Uh, but you're under oath? Yes. And you understand you need to tell the truth? Totally. Where was Michelle living in 2017? She was living in Fort Jefferson Crossing in Farmington. Do you know who Michelle was living with at Fort Jefferson Crossing? Yes, yeah, she was living with uh, Foti Zulos and uh, the daughter, Nicole. When did you meet Foti Zulos? I met, first of all, I met Michelle, and then we became friends, and then she introduced me to uh, Foti. Did you also become friends? Did you consider Foti Zulos a friend of yours? Yes, was friend, yes. In 2017 and 2018, did you socialize with both Michelle and Fotis? Yes, it was more with Michelle, but uh, yes, we did movie nights, uh, barbecues, uh, Mother's Days together, that he was there. Uh, yes, that typical things that you do with your friends, and when the partner is there, you socialize. And did you and your daughter and Michelle and her daughter get together? Yes. Do you water ski? Not water ski. Did you ever go down to the pond with yes, Michelle? Yes, I went to the pond. To the pond. Had you ever met Fotis's children? No, I never. Um, did there come a time in around 2018, did you ever learn that uh, Fotis was unable to see his children at any point in time? Yes, of course. And when you, when you were friends, with Fotis. Um, did you ever talk to him about his children? Yes, I know. Did you ever talk to him about uh, his inability to see his children? Yes, we talked. And did he ever express frustration to you? What were his emotions about that time, about not being able to see his children? Yes, of course, was frustration because he was the father and he wanted to see the kids. So it's logical that he expressed frustration. And around that time, around 2018, um, were you aware that there was a point in time where Michelle Traconis and her daughter were unable to be around Fotis's children as well when Fotis was with his children? Yes. Did Michelle ever express frustration to you about the conflict between yes, Fotis and yes. she did? Yes. Um, did she ever use disparaging language when talking about Jennifer? Excuse me, what is disparaging? Um, did she ever say anything, um, swear words ab about Jennifer? No. Have you, have you heard Michelle swear before? No. Maybe in Spanish we have like little words that are not maybe the best words to use, but uh, not huge. 
words or strong words. I'm going to go to around 2019 and about April or May. Did you ever learn um, that there was a custody report being prepared related to Fotis and his children? Yes, I heard. And uh, who was it who shared that information with you? Fotis. And did you know whether or not, in fact, a custody report had, had been finalized? Objection. Well, asking this witness... Do you, well, do you know whether, if the question is, do you know whether the custody report was in its final draft, what's the relevance? My next question, Your Honor, is going to be Fotis's reaction to it between April and May of 2019. You can just ask the question. Did, did Fotis um, react at all? to any out, any prepared custody report? Sorry, again? Did, did you learn whether Fotis had actually seen a custody report and reviewed one? He told that he there was a report that came favorable to him. And what was his reaction to that that you observed? Like, was a good reaction. He was going to have, have custody of the kids. That is what he thought. When you say custody of the kids, do you mean full custody or half and half custody? Did you have an understanding at the time? When I object to well, it. sustained. About when was it that Fotis expressed happiness about? Was he in Greek Easter around that, that time? I was there in Greek Easter. You were where? In the house, in the celebration of the Greek Easter. Right, you were at Fort Jefferson? Yes. Do you know about when Greek Easter was? Um, it was, I remember, my son's birthday is April 26, so it was 28, something like that, at the end of April. The end of April? Yes. Uh, do you know who else was at that celebration? Where all my kids uh, was uh, Michelle's part of family, a lot of kids were there, um, were 40 friends, some I remember... Uh, Mike Rose, I remember Pavel was there. Do you know who Mike Rose is? Yes, he's a lawyer. All right. Um, when you say Michelle's family was there, do you mean Michelle's mother or father? Who do you yes. object, Your Honor? Ground. Relevance of who was present at Greek Easter. Well, this is probably leading to another inquiry, so mm -hmm. overruled. And did you observe Fotis's, uh, it, just to ask Michelle's family, can you tell the jury who was actually present at that dinner? It was uh, Maricela, uh, the mother, Maricela, the daughter. Um, it was the husband of Maricela, the daughter, the, uh, the father, and nephews, and yes, yes and nephews. And uh, Fotis was there and, and happy and celebrating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you been over to Fort Jefferson on many occasions between 2017 and 2019? Yes. Would you go over by yourself sometimes? Um, yes. And have you been there with other friends as well? Yes. Are you familiar with uh, the house? You've been inside the house on several occasions? Uh, yes, mostly the first floor because we never went to the uh, sometimes to the upper place sometimes, but yes, I'm familiar with the house. Had you been in the living room? Yes. I may approach A you. lot. Yes. I'm showing it's been marked as exhibit BBB? Yeah, this is the living room. Do you recognize that picture? Yes, yes. Can you tell the jury what that's a picture of? Uh, well, this is the living room. Uh, there is like a second area of relaxing place, if you, you can say that. 
there is a fireplace, there is a TV. Uh, and from there, you could go outside the doors to the porch. And is that a fair and accurate depiction of what uh, the living room looks like? Yes. At Fort Jefferson? Yes. I asked that in the room. Did you show it to council? I did. They have a copy. No objection. What is that, BBB? It is. Triple B admitted as full. I don't think this is on me. I just show it to the jury briefly. Um, was the fireplace being used? Uh, when? when you went over sometimes? Yes. Was there a grate in front of the fireplace? What is Like a protective barrier yes, in front yes, of the fireplace? Yes. Was that always there? Yes. Um, and did you go to Fort Jefferson every season? Did you go in the winter? Yes. In the went spring? All the season. Were there certain times when the fireplace was not going? Yes. All right. But was that dependent on the season or was it just going sometimes and sometimes it wasn't? No, depends more, not on the season, more on the weather, maybe. And um, also it was a relaxing moment. Like the, maybe it's not to hit the house, but it's like a good moment to share like with someone or drinking wine or a tea, that, something like that. Like, Would there sometimes be a fire going on when it was still warm outside? Yes. Did they also have a fireplace outside, like a, an outside fireplace? Yes, a fireplace. And, and was that going a lot? Yes. All seasons? Yes, yes. I'm going to bring you now to May 24th, 2019. May 24th. Yes. Were you at Fort Jefferson at any point in time on May 24th, no. 2019? No. Um, so you don't know whether Michelle had a fire going at any point in time? No, I no, have, have no idea. And you don't know if she left the house and, no. and hadn't... Object, completely... Your Honor. Objection. Right. She uh, asked and answered. She clearly said she wasn't there that day. Well, the court does not know what the second question was. So the court does understand she indicated that she was not there on that day. She does not know whether there was a fire in the fireplace that day. So that's overruled. The next question. Thank counsel. you. I can ask a couple of foundational questions. Even though you weren't at Fort Jefferson, were you on the phone with Michelle Traconis at multiple times during the day? Yes. All right. Um, and do you know whether Michelle left the house before closing off a fire? Objection. Um, well, calls for hearsay. Well, the question now is, did you talk to Michelle Traconis on the phone about fire in the fireplace? Because the witness has already said she wasn't there on that day. So you don't know? No. Your Honor, it, if I may it, get a ruling on the objection. Overruled. It, thank you. So you don't know? No, no, I don't. Did you see Michelle Traconis on May 24th, 2019? Yes. When is the first time that you spoke to Michelle on May 24th? I spoke... Uh, during the morning, because that day uh, I told her if she can come to my store. I had a store in Sinsbury, a uh, decoration store, and she was my provider of rugs. So I called her and said, can we meet? Because that day I was going to travel to London, and I wanted to pay her some rugs that I owed her. So uh, I said, please come between I 10... Uh, to, yeah, he went between 10 and 24, 45, I don't remember exactly the time, but I said I will be in a very short gap of time because I have to do all my stuff for the trip. And uh, so we met in my store around 11. I don't remember exactly 10, 45, 11. Or, and we were doing that. The accounting of the rugs, uh, we were saying goodbye. My business partner was there too, uh, was painting in the basement. And that, that's it. At some point, she said, take pictures in London. Yes, goodbye. And that was my interaction in the store. Okay. 
Um, other than you said that Michelle was there, was anybody with Michelle? Did she go to the store with anybody? No, she came alone. And other than your partner at the store, you and Michelle, was anybody else there at the time? No. How did Michelle seem when she was at the store with you that morning? She was uh, every, like every single day that she came to my store. She sat down in front of my desk. We were working both with the numbers. And do you want cash? Do you want a check? I prefer a check. So that was the interaction. Uh, like every single day. She used to come a lot to my store. Do you remember if while she was at your store, if she was on the phone or using the phone? No, I don't recall. All right. Um, do you recall what time she left your store? Yes. It was not more than 45 minutes when she arrived, so it was not like 12. It could be. Was Michelle in a rush at all? Excuse was me? Was she in a rush? No, it was me that I was in a rush. Because you were leaving yeah. for a vacation? Did you communicate at all with Michelle at any other point in time during the day? Yes, a lot of times. Can you tell the jury about those communications? Um, in one moment, I took an Uber to go to Boston, and the Uber driver stopped to put oil to the car and make some stuff with the car, and I texted her and said, this guy, like, he could do this in another time. He's dropping me off in Boston and he had to do so. It was like a funny conversation. And uh, then I remember finally I'm heading the airport. The airport. Uh, when I was in costumes, I remember that we exchanged, like, I'm, I'm in costumes, I can talk right now. And then I remember once I was in the gate that uh, I told him, now, now finally I'm in the gate. My, that was around 7, and the flight was going to be 8.30, I think. I don't remember exactly, but it was. I remember exactly that moment that I was in front of the guy. Um, so from 2017 to that conversation in yes. May of 2019, you had been friends with Michelle? Yes. And you had talked to her regularly? Yes. Uh, did she tell you at any point that she was on Albany Avenue with Objection. Curtis? Wow. It calls for hearsay. Well, this is somewhat of an unusual situation because it would be an exception if it were a statement offered by a party against the party. But this isn't being offered by the party against the So it could fall under statement by a, a party in the course of an infurtherance of the conspiracy. The court's going to overrule the objection. Um, you can answer that. Hi, uh, can you repeat the question? Please? Did Michelle ever say she was on Albany Avenue with no. Lotus, um no. or cleaning Edie Mountain? No. Okay. Did. While you were talking to her and texting with her, did she seem upset? No. Or nervous or in distress? No. Or anxious? Nothing. And you had talked to her many times before in the preceding months yeah. and years? Did you leave for London then that night? Yes. When's the next time that you recall talking to Michelle? Um... Monday, it was, yes, on Monday. And um, did Michelle seem upset on the phone when she called you on Monday? No, object, Your Honor. <clears throat> did Michelle seem upset when she called you that day? Ground. It calls for hearsay and relevance at this point as to the Monday after. Well, the question is, did she seem upset on the 28th, correct? Is yes, that the question? May yes, 28th? Overruled. Oh, I'm sorry. She was worried. Um, do you know what she was worried about? Yes, because she told me that Jennifer disappeared. I would object, Your Honor. Overruled. 
Yes, that, okay, I will answer again. Yes, she was worried because Jennifer disappeared. At some point, did you come back from London? Obviously yes. you did. Uh, when did you come back? I came back the same week on Thursday night, late in the night. When did you next see Michelle? On Saturday. Was that June 1st? June 1st, yes. Um, can you tell the jury when you saw Michelle and the circumstances surrounding that? Yes, that day I was working in my store and during the day we had a couple of conversations and she said we are going to go to uh, object again, Your Honor. Well, the court does not know what this testimony will be. The court is not certain it will be relevant. Every conversation is not going to be relevant. So, counsel, can you sharpen your question? I can, I can. Um, at some point, did you invite Michelle over to your house? Yes. Was Michelle with Fotis at the time? Yes. Was anybody else with Michelle on June 1st when she came to your house? Yes, Nicole, Michelle's daughter, and um, Maricela, Michelle's mother. And you had learned that Jennifer was missing several days before? Yes. Uh, when they got to your house, did Fotis, how did Fotis seem? Worried. He was worried. Um, at any time from when you heard Jennifer was missing until Fotis was over your house, uh, did you ever suspect him of being involved in any way? In Objection. Her no. no. Objection. Sustained. <clears throat> How did Michelle seem to you when she was at your house? She was tired that day. And um, was your daughter home? Yes. And Nicole was over? Yes, they were playing together. All right. Um, do you know what Fotis was worried about? Objection. Sustained. At some point, did they leave your house? Yes. And do you know where they went? Objection. Well, grounds. Cause for speculation. Well, it, the court hears it as a relevance objection. Do you know where they went after they left your house? Relevance. To the hotel. Well, I can't answer. strike that. It's sustained. Did Michelle indicate where she planned to go? Objection. Well, relevance, counsel. I can ask a few foundational questions beforehand. Were there police outside your house on June 1st when Michelle and Fotis were there? Objection. Well, she's a percipient witness as to whether there were police outside of her home. I mean, rather overruled. Yeah, they were. Okay. Um, and what was your understanding why police were outside of your house? My Objection. Was Sustained. At some point after Michelle left, did you receive a phone call? Yes. And who called you? Maricela. Did Maricela see? Objection. Well, the question hasn't been asked yet. What's the question? Did Maricela seem upset on the phone? Objection, relevance. Sustained. What happened after you received that phone call? Objection. Well, the question is really what did you do after you received the phone call? And the objection is relevance. Relevance, counsel. Your Honor, she had she had just learned that uh, Michelle had been taken into custody, and it's relevant what she did next. Well, well, first the question: What did you do? And the court does not know what the answer is, but the fact that Michelle Traconis was arrested is that's not in dispute. What this witness did as a result of Michelle Traconis being arrested, well, let's hear the question, counsel. What did this witness do as a result of Michelle Traconis being arrested? That's the question? It is, Your Honor. Relevance. Sustained. 
Did you ever speak to FOTUS again after May 24th, 2019? No, never again. <clears throat> you and Michelle continue to speak? Yeah. You remain friends? Yeah. Was that May 24th, 2019? Yes. That day? The day of Michelle's arrest that she was at your house, that was the following week? The following week. Was it May 31st? Object, Your Honor. So, the fact that Michelle Patonis was at the witness's home, it's already been established. So, sustained. Just, Your Honor, I just need to clarify the date, may I ask? Well, you can clarify the date, Counsel. On what date was Michelle Traconis at your home? What day was Michelle Traconis at your home that night? June 1st. Okay, June 1st. Thank you. Is English your primary language? No. What is your primary language? Spanish. Do you and Michelle speak in English or Spanish when you talk? In Spanish only. Do you, you never talk in English to Michelle? Unless there is a third person, that, that third person is an English speaking language uh, because of manners or respect. We speak in English between us. It's kind of weird. But yes, we do that. And uh, certain times, though the, there is a third person and it's night and we are tired, we say, like, excuse me for a minute. We are going to talk something short between us because uh, it is easier to certain words and I and we exchange like in Spanish. But um, yes, between us is always Spanish. No way. In April and early May of 2019, was Michelle expressing a present intention to move? Objection. Yes. Well, that present court does not recall whether the that evidence the court believes had come in already. So that's overruled. You can answer. Yes. Okay. And do you know where she was planning to move? She had a, an apartment in Bale, Colorado. And was she planning to move with her daughter? Yes. Do you know whether her daughter is a competitive skier? Yes. And she was pursuing her career. So she was going to move to their apartment in Bale. Okay. Thank you. One moment, please. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Just a couple questions. Hi, yes. How are you? Good. Um, just a couple of questions. You've known Michelle Traconis a couple of years now. Uh, can so you speak a little louder? Sure. And please let me know if you can't yes. understand me, okay? I am soft-spoken. Just let yes. me know. Okay. I, I understand. Okay. Um, you, how long have you been friends with Michelle Traconis? Uh, 80 years. Like 80 years, yes. Okay. And you would consider yourself a good friend? Yes. In fact, you've actually referred to her in the past or your relationship stating you instantly clicked and had an incredible connection. Do you recall saying that? I Yes, we have since the beginning a very good relationship because we share <laughs> similar backgrounds, not only uh, morals and principles, also because our careers. I worked as a TV producer with ESPN International and in Argentina doing some work and she worked in ESPN in Argentina. So we have a lot of people in common. It was very easy to get okay. along with her and, and the daughters. I, I just want to make sure I understand ESPN is the, the sports network? Yes. Okay. And you worked in, did you work in the United States or in South America? I worked here in the United States, but uh, also was doing some freelance work in ESPN in Argentina. Okay. And you had that in common with Michelle Traconis? Yes. So she we, will... we, we knew a lot of people that we talked to. You know this? Yes. Oh, yes. I am friend with this. I knew this. So it was very easy. Because she used to work at ESPN in Argentina. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you've described your friendship as a well, the two of you being inseparable, do you recall saying, writing that? No, inseparable, no, we are close friends. I don't remember if I, if I where, from where, okay. where did you find that? Well, would it refresh your recollection to take a look at a letter you wrote 
back in March of 2023. Oh, well, it could be yeah. like inseparable. Yeah, very close. Okay, would you like to see the letter? Or would no, it's okay. okay. I trust you. Okay. Um, and you also described it as a beautiful friendship. Yes. Can you call saying that? Yes, healthy okay. and beautiful okay. friendship. And it, I think you testified on direct as well that you did lots of stuff together. Yes. Um, you talked about barbecues. Yes. And I think in the letter you referred to hiking and coffee. Yes. Okay. You spent a lot of time with her. Yes. Okay. And you care about her a lot. Of course. And you both have your own business, correct? Yes. In 2019, what's the name of your store? Lighthouse Designed Concept Store. In Sinsbury, Connecticut. In Sinsbury. And Michelle Turconis was a supplier for your business. Yes. Okay. She had her own business selling rugs. Yes. And she sold rugs at your store? So again? Did she sell rugs at your store? I, I sell rugs in my store. She was my provider. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, now, you've uh, spoken to her about the fact that you're testifying today. Yes. Okay. And you've spoken to Attorney Showhorn about your testimony or Attorney Felsen? Felsen. Attorney Felsen? Okay. Um, now, back in 2019, uh, you were aware of Jennifer Barbara Doulos's disappearance, correct? Yes, of course. Okay. And you were also aware that the police were investigating? Yes. Okay. And actually, in May of 2021, uh, the state police actually reached out to you. Yes. And you, uh, Detective John Kimball, called you. Do you recall that? I remember uh, that I received a text from nowhere and I said, okay, this is a scam. I couldn't believe that the police was going to contact me by text. So I said, okay, I will not answer. And then I went to work and I saw an email and I said, okay, he, it seemed like it was real. And like I found out like it was, I don't know if they were professional because I saw the shield of the police and something else. And yes, it was in 20, like 700, Days after the disappearance. Seven, it was 700 days after the disappearance? Yes. And it, that you was were contacted? Surprised. For me, it was very surprised. Okay. That you were contacted by the police? And by Detective Kimball by email. Okay. And uh, they asked to speak with you, and you refused to speak with them. Is that I correct? didn't refuse to speak with them. I said that uh, if they want, they can subpoena me. So I could go and talk with an interpreter because I knew I didn't trust them. That is the truth. So I said, okay, I will go subpoena me and I will go with a, an interpreter. Actually, it, isn't it true you indicated you would be happy to truthfully yes, answer because... any questions? Please let me finish my question, okay. please. Go I, ahead. I would be happy to truthfully answer any questions you have for me via email. Yes, because I felt more comfortable also because my language. Okay. So it is easier for me to write than to speak. And you actually, in that email, told them that you had information that would help the defendant. Uh, yes, I have here the email if you want. No, it's okay. I have ah, it. Okay. Um, you said you had information that would hurt the state's case. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, but you would only answer that if they submitted their questions in writing. No, not only in writing, I, I was clear saying, subpoena me, and I, I will be happy to be there and testify or interview. And you also called them incompetent. Yes, I did. Okay. And I feel and like I was I went a little farther. But yes, I called, I called them incompetent, but then I put in bracket that that was not what I said. I said I had two options. One that... You are incompetent, that I don't think so. That was in parenthesis. And the second option was that, or you don't want to hear uh, the other side of a story because uh, how you are not going to interview a person that was sitting in front of you looking at your eyes, the same of uh, supposedly at the exactly time that a woman disappeared. And well, I was... Suspicious. Yeah, let me ask you this, uh, yeah. ma'am, if you can. So you had, at that time, you felt you had information that could help your friend. You're correct? Yes. Okay, and that you were inseparable, beautiful friendship. Yes. You had information. And since the um, 
five years since 2019 and three years since you've been contacted uh, by the police. You kept that to yourself. Yes, because I didn't trust the police. Okay. And it, it, you didn't tell, you didn't contact anybody else? You didn't contact the news media? No, I, I would okay. never talk in the media. Okay. Or anybody else just say you kept that information that you claim helps your friend for for five years now? I was, I was waiting for this day to talk with everyone about it. Okay. And I just want to make sure I clarify for something you said on direct. Um, in May, June time period of 2019, uh, Michelle Tricun, well, I'm sorry, prior to, in May of 2019, Michelle Traconis was planning on moving to Colorado? Uh, she was planning in which? In, in 2019, in May of 2019, she, you testified on direct that she had an intention to move out of state. Yes, yes, she was. I don't know exactly if it was May. I don't have the, but she was close to moving to Colorado because I remember that because uh, she was saying, but I want for my daughter to finish school. That it makes a lot of sense. So after that, she was going to move to Colorado. And she was going to leave Photostulos and move to Colorado. She was going to move to Colorado. I don't know if she was leaving, uh, leaving him. She was moving to Colorado. That is Nothing correct. further. Thank you, ma'am. The state had asked you some questions about being contacted by the police. Yes. Do you remember that in 2021? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you were with Michelle on May 24th of 2019, right? Yes. Okay. And you had known Michelle all through 2017 and 2019? Yes. And you knew Fotos Tulos? Yes. You had been around them many times? Yes. You'd been there to their house many times? Yes. You've spoken to Michelle on many occasions? You texted with her a lot? I no. object, Your Honor. This is well, asked and answered is, and outside well, the scope. This is... A running wheel, but where's it going? I'm almost, I'll wrap it up, Your Honor. Uh, did the police contact you in May of 2019? No. Did they contact you uh, in June of 2019 after Michelle was arrested? No. Which, did the police contact you in September of 2019 when she was arrested the second time? No, never. All right, how about <coughs> January of 2020? Did the police contact you then when she was arrested the third time? No. I have no further questions. Thank you. Oh, nothing further. Hey, ma'am, you may step down. Thank you.